In this video, we discuss memory management, with particular reference to paging, segmentation, and virtual memory. So in order to understand this topic, we're going to use a diagram on the left here. So effectively what we've got is random access memory, main memory. Now when your computer first starts up, it loads the operating system and then you interact with other applications and programs and they get loaded into memory. So here, programs A, B, C and D have all been loaded. Program C has now been closed and the memory has been released. Program E arrives, but as we can see, it won't fit into either of the three spaces available in main memory. Now, there is enough total free space available, it just doesn't have to be located together in a single block. Now, one solution could be to move the location of program D in memory so the free space is all together. Although this looks really simple to do with our abstract diagram here, it's not actually very desirable to operate like this in practice. It takes a lot of time to move a program in memory or on disk. All the addresses and free space references need updating. We actually need another solution. Now there are two main strategies, both of which essentially involve dividing up memory into smaller sections. They are paging and segmentation. So with pages, the memory is divided into fixed sizes, all the same. Pages are made to fit sections of memory. These pages are considered to be physical divisions, and the programs are split up to fit into these given number of pages. Now paging takes no account of how it splits the program only that it splits it into these fixed size pages. It's quite possible that it could separate the instructions inside, say, a looping condition, so they're in different parts of memory. And of course, this is not very desirable, as it would become quite inefficient. It would be better to keep those kind of instructions all together. Well, another option is segmentation. Here, the segments are different sizes. They're complete sections of program. So now we're dividing up memory based on logical divisions and not arbitrary physical divisions. So here, program B has been closed and the memory has been released. A new program E is loaded. There's plenty of free space, so it just goes in. Now program F arrives. It's too big to fit in either of these free spaces, but based on logical and sensible divisions, segmentation can split the program into two parts and it places them in the available free space as shown, leaving two smaller areas of free space. So as a summary, here are the similarities and differences with paging versus segmentation. You might like to pause the video at this point and take some notes before moving on. So after a while, it's obviously perfectly reasonable to have a situation where main memory has become full, as is shown here. Now, job G ideally would like to run. It would seem we have to prevent the program from loading at all. Now, this situation is far from ideal. The solution is to make use of what we call virtual memory. When programs and data are being fetched and executed by the CPU, they are stored in RAM. However, this assumes that the memory is large enough to hold all the programs being executed. In modern computers, it's common to have more than one program open at once. However, you can store significantly more programs on the hard disk compared to RAM, because byte for byte, hard disk space is much cheaper than RAM. When you turn your computer on, the bootstrap program will load the operating system from the disk into RAM. When you use a computer, every time you double click an icon to load a program, it transferred those instructions into RAM. 
But what happens when you run out of RAM? As instructions are fetched one at a time, that means that some of the instructions are not likely to be fetched in the near future. Therefore, one solution is to transfer instructions that are not being used to a space on the hard disk, and this is known as virtual memory. When these instructions are needed again, a different program can be swapped out of RAM to virtual memory to make room for the instructions that are now needed. This gives the impression that a computer has more memory than it actually has. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How does a computer handle running out of memory and why does it slow down?